I might be happily married, but if Rhodes walked into my life. You are one of the people who says that you don't like friends to lovers. This is the one. And all I could think while reading this was divorce, baby, divorce. <laughs> hey y'all, it's Robin. Welcome back to my channel. So I am doing uh, another round of recent reads. I know I did one of these somewhat recently, but I got a little behind on filming my recent reads videos and I've been reading a lot of books. So I have 10 more books to talk about in this video. I actually have quite a few of them physically and actually the majority of these are like four to five stars. I only had a couple of three stars, but overall this was a really good recent reads. I have a lot of five stars, a lot of favorites, so let's get into everything I read and what I thought about it. So first up is the second book in the Deliver Us bind up. It's called Vanquish and I gave this one three stars. As of right now I have read this entire bind up and book one is still my favorite. So in book two, Vanquish, we are following Van who was kind of like the ringleader of the sex trafficking ring that we're following in this series and it is his redemption story and as much as I ended up enjoying this at the end it took me quite a while to get on board with his romance because he's not a good guy <laughs> and usually I can get past that but he's extremely unlikable and like there was a lot for me to get past. He starts off by kidnapping our heroine and just trying to use her as his own personal sex slave while trying to make her fall in love with him. And like along the way, he ends up like softening and realizing that he can't do that and really ends up falling for our heroine. However, that first part, like I said, it was really hard to get past. Our heroine deals with OCD as well as agoraphobia and she has extreme panic attacks every time she gets near a door or windows or anything like that. And so it is him trying to break her, fall in love with him and become dependent on him. And it ends up being their romance. Like I said, in the end, Pam Godwin's the only one who could get me on board even at the end of that. The only one capable of that. But it, it was a journey for me to get on board with this romance. So in the end, I gave it three stars. However, like I said, in the end, I did, I did somehow get on board with their romance. After that, I read All Roads Elite Here by Mariana Zapata, and now that I have started on Mariana Zapata's books, I'm kind of obsessed and want to read all of them. I gave this one four and a half stars. This was very nearly a five stars. I just didn't love this one quite as much as Culty, and so I ended up giving four and a half stars, but I will say that Rhodes is one of my new favorite heroes of all time. Completely obsessed with him. I might be happily married, but if Rhodes walked into my life. So in this, we are following our heroine who is getting out of a divorce, a very long, I want to say they were together for like 14 years, and she's getting out of that situation, and she has decided to move back to Colorado where her mother lived, and when she was a child, I want to say her mother died when she was like 12-ish. Her mother went on a hike and never came back. And she ended up moving in with her aunt and uncle down in Florida. But she has now returned to this small Colorado town to try and reconnect with her childhood, reconnect to her relationship with her mom, and finally put down roots and create a life for herself. And she ends up airbnb being this like little apartment above a garage. And it turns out that Rhodes's son put up the apartment without his knowledge, like against, against what Rhodes wanted. And so she is there and all of a sudden this big grumpy guy breaks into the apartment and tells her to get out because he thinks she's breaking and entering. And they have this big blow up and in the end he lets her stay in the apartment and slowly they thaw to each other and there's a beautiful fawn family in here and it's just, it's so good. I loved this a lot. This is another hella slow burn romance and I just, I loved it. It has such good grippy sunshine vibes. It, like I said, it has a good fawn family. It has great friendships. I just liked this a lot. Like I said, Rhodes is a new all-time favorite hero. I'm kind of in love with him and 
I'm obsessed with Mariana Zapata books now. So after that, I went into a series binge and I did that a couple of times here. So first up, I read A Fate of Wrath and Flame or I reread A Fate of Wrath and Flame and then went into A Curse of Blood and Stone by K.A. Tucker. I gave A Fate of Wrath and Flame and Curse of Blood and Stone both five stars. I love these. I do have a vlog where I read this book initially and I'll link that up in the cards and down in the description box. I did not vlog my experience reading this, I don't think, but I will link my Goodreads down below if you want to see my full like review over on Goodreads. This is an adult fantasy romance that I am just obsessed with. I am definitely in the minority here, but this is kind of what I wanted Blood and Ash to be, and it wasn't. And I know that's a really unpopular opinion because this has significantly worse ratings than Blood and Ash, but I just did not get on with Blood and Ash the same way other people did. But this series just does it for me. I feel like this does a better job of the world building. I feel like this does a better job of the politics and pacing and everything like that. And it's just, it has me in its grips. So we're following a heroine who, through a series of events, accidentally gets sent to a fantasy realm. And she wakes up in the body of a princess. And that princess has just murdered the royal family. And now the new king who was her betrothed, wants her dead because she just killed his family. And along the way, she's trying to convince everyone that she has no memories of anything that happened before she inhabited the body and that she's a totally different person. And so she's trying to gain their trust and get out of this situation all while trying to find this key that the person that sent her to this fantasy world told her she needed to find. And so it's her figuring out what is going on in this world, why is she being used, why was she sent there, how can she get out of this deadly situation, and it is court politics, and her falling in love with her patrols that she doesn't remember, and him possibly falling back in love with her. There's a lot of gods and magic, possibly slight vampire-esque creatures in here. It's just, it's very fast paced. It's really well done. It's really well written. I loved the sequel so much. I was nervous going into the sequel that I wasn't going to love it as much as book one. And I was even nervous when I was rereading book one because I was like, what if I don't have that same reaction? I loved it just as much the second time around. I loved book two and I can't wait for more books in that series. After that, I read Enemy of My Enemy by Tal Bauer and... I just, I'm I'm binging through Tal Bauer's backlist and I'm loving every second of it. I gave this one five stars. This is book two in the Enemies of the State, I think is what the series is called. In this, we are following the president of the US and his ex-secret service agent. In this one, they are now a couple and they are living in the White House together and they're still trying to take down this organization that is trying to overthrow the government. It is them fighting back against this. By the time that we get to Enemy of My Enemy, there are also a lot of side characters and side plots and all kinds of different things happening. The series is super intense, super fast paced. It's one of those series where your blood pressure kind of skyrockets for the entire time that you're reading because you're never sure who you can trust and what's going to happen next and who's going to get betrayed and killed and hurt and all of the things. And I ended up binging this in one sitting. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure I lost three to four years off my life because of it, but I'm obsessed. I've already downloaded book three so that I can finish out the series because I need to know how it ends. I need to know. And then I read Lotus by Jennifer Hartman, which is the second book that I've read by Jennifer Hartman, and I loved this. I ended up giving this four and a half stars. I read this for Riley's book club over on her Patreon, and this was just so good. Jennifer Hartman's writing is somehow, she gets, she does such a good job of like balancing like humor and in these intense moments and like the romance and all of these things. And it was just so well crafted, which is amazing because she's only been writing books for a few years. I want to say she started writing in like 2020. And so this was, this was so well done. I will say if you are one of the people who says that you don't like friends to lovers, this is the one. So we were following these two characters who were best friends when they were children and around their sixth 
ish birthday, the hero is kidnapped. And so he disappears and no one has any idea who took him, where he went, and he's kind of presumed dead. And our heroine has never really recovered from this situation and she keeps everybody at arm's length except for his brother who is her best friend. They have the best platonic friendship. I loved it. He is the only one that she really opens up to. She, every relationship, relationship that she goes into, she keeps at arm's length. She doesn't really want anything serious because she doesn't know how to trust after lo losing this person that she loved so dearly. And then right at the beginning of the book, he suddenly resurfaces. He thinks that the world is uninhabitable and obviously really quickly realizes that it's not and that everything he has known his whole life has been a lie and now he is trying to reacclimate himself to the world. He has been in captivity for like, I think it's like 15 years. And so he doesn't know what cell phones are. He doesn't understand like any technology, anything like that. He's very overwhelmed by the world because he was kidnapped at such a young age. And he is just the sweetest hero. He is one of my, another one of my favorite heroes. I loved his innocence and the way that he described things. Like he talks about how he orders, his brother orders him a shirt from Amazon and he talks about how the shirt came from the Amazon and how far it came, but it was so, it was so fast. <laughs> and just, it was really sweet. And it's, like I said, one of the best friends to lovers romances. He's very blunt and direct. And it is the two of them reconnecting their friendship and helping each other through him coming back to the world, her letting herself feel and open up and love again. It is such an amazing romance. There is also some like twists and turns in here, which I really loved. Like I said, Jennifer Hartman just does such a good job of balancing all these different elements that should not work together, but somehow do. I was talking in the live show about how this is one of those really good examples where you're reading it and you're like, are there just three or four different plots happening throughout this book? And somehow she ties them all together in the end and it was, it was great. So I really like this one. 4.5 stars. Highly recommend it if you read Still Beating and you want more Jennifer Hartman. This is definitely one to check out. After that, I read The Perfect Crimes of Marion Hayes by Kat Sebastian. This is the sequel to The Queer Principles of Kit Webb. And I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. I really liked this series. I will say if you're going to read this series, you do have to read these in order. I've seen a couple of people say that they want to read this. You have to read Kit Webb before this one. You might be able to figure it out, but you're going to miss a lot of backstory and like understanding of what is happening in here because what Marion is doing in this book is a direct reaction to what happened in book one. And so if you don't read book one, you're not gonna really understand why Marion is doing any of the stuff that she's doing in this book, as well as the love interest Rob. Like they're, they're talking about stuff that happened in book one. And if you don't read book one, you will not understand this. So it is a an actual sequel. I would not call this a companion book. In this, we are following Marion, like I said, who is doing stuff because of what happened in book one. And they are traveling to her family home to try and protect her. And along the way, they are getting to know each other and they have witty banter and good interactions and they are possibly falling in love. These characters are both bi. I love that Kat Sebastian always writes queer romances. It's just one of my favorite things, especially in historicals where they are predominantly straight white stories. And so I love that Kat Sebastian is always writing these more diverse romances, historical romances. So I really loved that. I really liked their banter and their chemistry and everything like that. But I've talked about this a lot. I don't like I don't like road trip romances. I don't like road trip stories in general. And this had all of your road trippy things where they're on horseback and have to stop at a stream and then they get back on horseback and they stop at an inn and then they get back on horseback and they stop at another inn and then they get back. And I just, I don't like travel stories. <laughs> and so I, I found myself getting bored throughout here because I was just like, okay, like I get it, you're traveling. And so it, this plot of this one just didn't quite do it for me. I will say I liked the characters. I liked how everything tied up in the end. I still love Cat Sebastian's writing and I get why so many people really, really loved this because like if you do like that sort of like travel plot, 
it's all in here. So this it, this one, this rating is definitely more of a me thing and not the book thing. This is just my preferences in books is why I gave this three and a half stars. But the writing in here was fantastic. The characters were great. The romance itself was wonderful. So that is that one. From there, I went into Praise by Sarah Kate. And this is a five star. I officially get all of the Sarah Kate hype. I am now a Sarah Kate stan. I'm on the train. I get it. This was so, so good. I will say while I was reading this book, all I could think about was that video that Riley did where she talked about whether or not the characters were going to stay together after the book. And all I could think while reading this was divorce, baby, divorce. <laughs> Not because I didn't love this romance, because I did, but there is a huge age gap in here and all I could think was, honey, you're gonna wake up in like 15 years and he's gonna be an old wrinkly man <laughs> and you're still gonna be in your late 30s. <laughs> but in this, we are following our heroine who is going through a breakup with her ex and she needs to get like her half of the security deposit back. And he tells her that it is at his dad's. And so she goes to his dad's house. And when he, when she gets there, he thinks that she is one of his subs. And so he tells her to get on her knees. And she does. <laughs> and they quickly realize that this the, that's not what the situation is. And so he apologizes to her and gives her the security check. But then he feels bad and he decides that he should offer her a job because he wants to reconnect with his son and since she is his son's ask ex he thinks that that is a good way to get his son back into his life so he offers offers her a secretarial position and it is their romance he is a dom and she has a praise kink and it is them discovering that together. Our hero is a millionaire and he owns the Salacious Players Club. It started off as like an online dating site essentially, but everyone can share their kinks, but they are now opening their first sex club. I'm obsessed with this series. Like I said, there's a huge age gap. She is like 22 or something like that and he's in his 40s, which is why the whole time I was like, I was like, honey, you're gonna wake up at 38 and he's gonna be in his 60s and you're just gonna be like, what was I doing here? This book is hella hot. Like, I was so on board with this while reading. I loved them together. It was just, it's so good. As I was reading this, purchased the entire series because I was like, well, I'm obsessed and I need to own it all. And I have started book two as well. And I love book two. And I do have book three. I know book three is like everyone's favorite. So I'm super excited for that. And then the last two books that I read were was another series binge and that was These Hello Vows and These Twisted Bonds. So These Hello Vows was a reread. I gave this a four and a half stars upon a reread. I gave it four stars the first time, but this series is just so ridiculously addictive. And like I re I listened to this on audiobook as my reread and I loved it. This is a YA fey fantasy and it is all of the tropes like it is all the cliches and tropes and everything like that like but something about this is just so addictive and readable and good you're following a heroine at the beginning who is a great thief her and her sister are stuck in this never-ending debt and at the beginning of the story her sister is sold to a fake king in order to pay for their debts. And so our heroine begrudgingly goes into the fey realm to try and rescue her sister. And she discovers that the guy that she has been falling in love with in the mortal realm is secretly a fey prince. She is there trying to save her sister, gets wrapped up into a ploy to possibly marry said prince, all while also getting to know the rival court's fey prince, who is helping her understand her magic. Like I said, there's a love triangle, there's the Seely and Unseely courts, there's the rival kingdoms, there's a play for power, there's there's all, all of the tropes that you love in a fey story are in here, but it's just so addictive and so good. And this ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. And so I went right into These Twisted Bonds, which is the end to the duology, which I really liked. I liked that this was a duology and it didn't like, drag on and on, especially since this is just a really fun fave romance. 
it didn't need nine books. Like it just didn't need that. And so this was, this was the perfect number of books and I gave the sequel five stars. I just loved this. I loved how it all played out. You definitely get into a point in this book where you're just like, how is this ever gonna work itself out? Like there, I could not come up with ways for this to work itself out. And somehow it does in the end. This is very much so a love triangle in this book. So you're kind of introduced to it in here, but this one is definitely the love triangle. And you're also figuring out everyone's powers and how the courts are connected and trying to save the courts. And it's just, it's very fast paced. There's a lot in here. There's a lot of interconnecting plots and prophecies and all of the things and I just I had such a good time with this book. If you are just looking for a good duology that you can just binge, this is such a good one. They're a little chunky but they just fly. These are such fast reads. So if you are into the whole fey romance fantasy thing, I highly recommend that one. Lexi Ryan is a romance author and so the romance romance elements in there. Top tier. Highly, highly recommend. That is a YA story. However, I will say it is on the older end of YA. Those are not closed door steamy scenes. <laughs> They're not extremely detailed, but they are not closed door. So I will say that is the higher end of YA. I would not give this series to an 11 year old, but uh, very, very good. So that is all 10 books that I read recently. Like I said, I read a lot of four and five stars. It was just a really, really good reading time lately. I have already read quite a few more books. So there will be another one of these coming, I think, in like two-ish weeks. So I will... I will have another wrap up coming soon. Let me know how your reading is going. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if any of these on your are on your TBR and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye.